The experiment we did after this, so after this particular experiment, we did another exercise where we looked at CO2 production in plant embryos. Okay, so one of the common misconceptions I find by students is that you were taught in grade school that humans breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide and plants breathe in carbon dioxide and breathe out oxygen, which immediately makes most people think that when plants perform cellular respiration, they're breathing in CO2 and breathing out oxygen. That is not correct. Plants utilize carbon dioxide for carbon fixation and photosynthesis, and they produce oxygen during the reactions involved in photosynthesis. But plants perform respiration in the same way that humans and other animals do. Okay? They have mitochondria that can actually utilize glucose and oxygen to produce adenosine triphosphate, carbon dioxide, and water. So what we want to look at is we want to look at how much CO2, not necessarily actually quantify it, but see when CO2 is produced in certain plant embryos. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're actually going to take two sets of black-eyed peas. Okay, we bought these in a grocery store. They were in a bag. They were dry. We opened the bag and we put them into water. Okay, now these peas that we bought in that bag are technically dormant, but when we put them into the water, they enter a state that's known as germination. Germination, as your lab manual states it, is a period of growth after a period of dormancy. So now these peas are growing. They've been surrounded with water and they're ready to grow. Part of growth requires energy. So while these plants are germinating, they're going to be performing cellular respiration. Okay. But we're going to do something with these peas. We're actually going to divide them into two different groups. We're going to take one set and we're going to boil them. So we boil one set of peas, and then we're going to take another set, and we're not going to boil them. So now, thinking about this, which of these two sets of peas is technically still performing germination and therefore still performing respiration? Uh, respiration? If you said those that were not boiled, you're correct. So these are still performing respiration. which means if they're taking in glu or utilizing glucose and oxygen, then they should be producing carbon dioxide. These, on the other hand, in theory, are dead at this point. Okay? One of the reasons why, if you think back to the enzyme unit, is you heated them up to a boiling temperature. Therefore, you most likely denatured many of the proteins that these peas would have needed to utilize. You probably also disrupted um, some of the cellular membranes and cell walls with the boiling, but you also denatured those proteins that these peas are going to need to, util uh, to use to perform respiration, okay, and any of their other metabolic processes. So, no respiration, which means no CO2, okay? So, this is just the initial setup. After you set it up, what you then did, after you boiled or didn't boil, was you set up a respiration apparatus. Okay, that looks something like this. either had a bottle or an Erlenmeyer flask, and you put your peas inside of that bottle or Erlenmeyer flask. Okay? And then you took this tubing that came out of the top rubber stopper, so we've got a rubber stopper here that leads up to this tube called a thistle tube, which also has a rubber stopper in it, and then we have this rubber tubing here that goes into this test tube. Okay, and that rubber tubing is submerged underneath a level of water. Okay, this was allowed to incubate for 40 minutes. Okay, after it incubated for that 40 minute time period, you then 
would remove the water and we're going to use something to actually test to see if carbon dioxide was or was not produced. Okay? Before we get there, one common misstep by students is that they think that because we have sealed this off completely so that nothing can get in or out, that this is therefore anaerobic respiration and that is not correct. Okay? Before you sealed this off, what all was in here? Gases from the atmosphere. Okay, So you would have oxygen in here, which means these peas at this point in time can still perform cellular respiration. All right, So we remove the water, and instead what we add is a substance called phenol red. Okay, so we add phenol red. Phenol red is a pH indicator. Okay, in an acidic pH or environment, it turns yellow. In a neutral environment, as you probably guessed, it's red. And then in a basic environment, it turns pink. What we're going to do next is we removed the rubber stopper and we added water. Now, part of the reason why we added this water was to force the gas through here, but more importantly, when water interacts with carbon dioxide, it actually forms what's known as carbonic acid. So, if it forms an acid, that acid is going to cause this solution to turn yellow. So if this solution turned yellow, then it tells you that carbon dioxide was present. Okay. So think about which of those two sets of peas, the boiled or the non-boiled, would have turned yellow, okay, based upon everything that we wrote and talked about previously here. Okay. The one that doesn't produce carbon dioxide is probably going to remain neutral and therefore stay red. Okay. So what we found at the end of this whole exercise was if it turned yellow, CO2 was produced. If it stayed red, CO2 was not produced. So the germinating peas in theory should be performing respiration. Those that were not germinating any longer should not. One last thing, the mouse experiment that we talked about previously is an example of a quantifi uh, quantifiable metabolic rate. Okay, so it was a quantitative analysis of the metabolic rate. This is a qualitative because we don't actually obtain any numeric values. We're simply asking, is CO2 present or is it not? 